This is a quick how to download, install, and license EMC PowerPath VE with vSphere 4. The first thing is to log in to PowerLink. Uh, EMC employees, EMC partners, VMware, and other EMC partners all have access to PowerLink. Um, if we go to support and go to software downloads and licensing, under P, we can find PowerPath for VMware. If we click on this, it takes us to the software downloads page for PowerPath where we can find all of the PowerPath software downloads, including PowerPath for VMware. You can see that this includes the vSphere code, as well as the management tools for Windows and for Linux hosts. Those management tools can get installed onto a VM. The next thing is, where can I find all the documents? If you go to Products, and then again, search for PowerPath, and then click on Documentation Library, you can find all the documentation associated with PowerPath VE. So if we take a look, it's grouped by PowerPath, PowerPath VE. Let's exa examine that. The key documents I found are the ones here in installation and configuration. Specifically, this one here is the key documentation, the install and admin guide. Basically, it has all the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything that we're going to see here, as well as how to manage it. So once you've downloaded it, the first thing you need to do is install the loadable module into the VMware vSphere pluggable storage architecture. And I'm using the virtual uh, management assistant, the VMA, because it can be used for both ESX as well as ESXi installs. The first command here I'm just doing for, for educational purposes, this basically shows you all of the loaded modules that are against a given host. By the way, we're working with VMware to uh, make this installable via VUM in the future. Um, and uh, it is patchable via VUM once the module is initially loaded. So here we, I haven't cached the uh, credentials, so I'm putting the uh, credentials against that individual host. And you can see that I have no modules loaded. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually load the module. Um, if I take a look here, I've actually copied the uh, PowerPath uh, VE bits here onto this host. Um, I used FTP to get them onto the VMA, and now I'm actually going to apply them against the individual ESX host using this command line. So VI host update, you specify the server, dash dash install, dash dash bundle, and then you provide the path to the bundle that you are installing. You don't need to unzip it or anything like that. The zip format is a standard VMware bundle that includes metadata as well as the uh, uh, actual stuff that's going to be loaded as the kernel module. So once we hit enter, it's once again going to ask us for the credentials, which we type in. Once again, you could, of course, use multiple ways to cache those credentials. I just want to keep it simple here. And then off it goes. You've got to wait a few seconds for the module to be uh, copied over and then installed on the host. And then it notes that the update is completed successfully. Some modules can be uh, loaded at runtime, and some of them uh, basically only get loaded once you... Uh, 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 reboot the host. So what we're going to do is we're going to use maintenance mode, uh, making it non-disruptive across the cluster. Here I'm also going to load the module on the other hosts all at the same time, and it's notable that you could script that entire configuration or make it standard part of uh, your host builds. Uh, here what I'm doing is I'm just putting the host into maintenance mode, um, and then subsequently what I'm going to do is reboot them. Um, this is a mechanism that can be used to non-disruptively deploy PowerPath VE, even though it does require the ESX host to be rebooted, just like uh, VUM critical patches that require, or VMware Update Manager uh, critical patches that require a host reboot, by using maintenance mode you can basically bring down one host at a time. One thing that's interesting is loading the modules the way we just did doesn't actually change the claim rules until the host is rebooted. So it's a completely non-disruptive operation um, and uh, uh, you can use this mechanism of going through maintenance mode, which is simple and easy, uh, across your entire VMR cluster. So here it's just about complete and that host is now in maintenance mode. I can now go and reboot that host. Everything will have been vacated off of it and uh, do that for every host in the cluster. So now that we come back after a reboot, and again it's the same on ESX or ESXi4, you'll notice that that dialog has changed a little bit. It doesn't specify 
uh, the PSP or the uh, SATP anymore, and you can see PowerPath is listed in the management GUI. So the next step is to basically install the remote management tool set. Here I'm doing it on a Windows VM. I've downloaded the other thing from the same location, and it's pretty well straightforward, next, 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 finish, install, so I'm not going to show it here. But once it's done, you've got some additional um, command line tools that are available to you. And these are very, very analogous to how PowerPath is managed on all sorts of hosts, which makes it pretty simple and easy for anyone who's used PowerPath in the past. So the first thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to type in this command, rpowermt, specify the host, and then type check underscore registration. Uh, I have fat fingered the host IP address here. So let me just quickly correct that. What this does is it checks the registration, and you'll notice that it says it's unlicensed. That'll actually improve the multipathing for a single path, but won't give you any load balancing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that number there. That host ID is important. It's the unique host identifier, and it is used to uh, specify the uh, host info. So where and how do you get licenses? If you're an EMC VMware or an EMC VMware partner, all you need to do is send an email to that email address, and ask for PowerPath VE licenses. You'll get a doc. If you paste in the host IDs from the earlier step, you'll get the keys in a very fast 24-hour turnaround. If you're a customer, all you need to do is ask EMC or your EMC partner to get you a 45-day trial. They can get it from Direct Express, and you can always buy it, which will get you the license keys. Once you've done that, uh, you have to paste the keys that you get. Uh, and this is one of two forms of licensing for PowerPath. This is what's called unserved licensing. You paste them into a specific directory as per the installation docs. And at that point, uh, all you need to do is actually register the hosts, which will uh, uh, enable those licenses and enable full PowerPath VE functionality. So this is the command line here. Off we go. Uh, rpowermt, the host name, and then register. And that's all there is to it. I'm just going to quickly register another host here in the cluster. And as soon as you register it, uh, the full power path functionality is turned on. If, perchance, we want to actually check for the licensing state, we can use the same command that we used earlier, rpowermt, then the host name, and then check underscore registration. And you can see that it's now licensed using the unserved type. Uh, it doesn't expire, and you can see those licensing files. It's pretty simple, very straightforward. And basically, at this point, um, you now have all the full PowerPath functionality. All PowerPath and multipathing configuration is automated. Uh, new path discovery and load balancing is now uh, adaptive. And if you're using the EMC array, it's even predictive. So thanks very much. Hopefully, you've seen that this is simple and easy. Uh, and in future sessions, I want to just show some uh, comparative performance and multipathing behavior using PowerPath VE. Thanks very much, and uh, looking forward to the next sessions.